Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back Sunless Skies. We are currently on the stairs to the sea in what could be the most creepy location in all of Sunless Skies. And surprisingly the vote's in and the vote was to leave an offering that wasn't a body. I'm I'm genuinely surprised. Food was the uh was the top requirement here. So I'm going to have to learn how to say supralapsarians or supralapsarians. Let's uh let's see if we can give them some food. Your crew do not complain as you ordered a crate opened and emptied over the side of the flotilla. They stand by your side as cans and flasks splash into the water. You can see reflected gazes staring into the depths. Hmm. I thought we were actually going to give them the food. I didn't think we were just going to, like, you know, throw it off the edge. Well, there is now a voice in the mists. A figure in an antiquated frock coat steps out of the mist. A fine evening to you. We were impressed with your offering. The man lowers his hood. His features are strident, striking, made all the more so by the lattice of tattoos marking his face like a verdant birthmark. He extends his hands. The world made flesh, and you have fed ours. We would be glad, the supralapsarians and I, to welcome you to our little enclave in the flotilla. He lowers his cloak to expose his tattooed collarbone. But first, you must read. Hmm. Can I ask about the supralapsarians? Who are these people? And what do they want with you? The archivist smiles blissfully. We are those who were left behind, so we have decided that we chose to stay. We keep with tradition. He waves airily about him. Ours is a remarkably liberating lifestyle. You helped us, however indirectly, with your gift. I'd like to return the favor. Well, in for a penny and all that. Let's read the illuminated archivist's flesh. The tattoos on his collar are a jumble of words and pictures. You make out a crab and a cave, a candle, and a roof. You recite the words you find there. I am home. He embraces you. Bony arms wrapped around your frame like stumbling into a coffin. Yes, you are home. Follow me. We're all at the flotilla at the moment. I dislike the arrangement, but there are too few of us to survive alone. If you like, I shall teach you to read. He says, read, with a weighty, portentous inflection. Okay. You have been initiated into the Supralapsarians. Bring five sheaves of ministry approved literature to the illuminated archivist. We still haven't found a place to hand that in yet. I'd like to get that here. Mists roll in, grey as unwashed ghosts. Starlight washes in like a tide. And we're known to the mystics of the gate. Here among abandoned boats on the quiet sea, the similarly abandoned and forgotten of Albion have made their homes. The cults share this space for warmth and shelter. Some boats are covered, others converted into makeshift anchorages, refectories and cells. Hopeful acolytes flock to one ecstatic figure or another, 
raving about this doctrine or that. Your new friends are one cult among three. The Sanctified, a loose collection of souls who follow the jolly anchorite, are communal, fraternal, jovial. The Supralapsarians, who follow the illuminating archivist, do everything by their book, when they can agree upon the interpretation. The displeased treat distrust as a virtue and betrayal as a sacrament. A woman is lying on a wheel that sits atop a pole that rises over the flotilla. She does not speak, but only watches the gate. Well, let's speak to the silent mystic. A wheel is accessible by a flimsy rope ladder rising up through the mists. She is rarely disturbed by the other acolytes, though they watch her intently. The woman lies on the wheel, her eyes on the looming shadows of the gate. She does not bother to look your way when you reach the top of the ladder. Rotting fruits, dried flowers, and tarnished nameplates lie ignored at the edge of the wheel. But we can attempt to speak to her. Something tells me this isn't going to work. You are new here. Perhaps you'll find that interesting. She rolls back her head to gaze at you. Her mouth twitches downward. Her hand rolls listlessly in your direction. I do not sense the hunger of a true aesthetic in you. Wear the name, the knife, wear the book. Be gone and waste not my time. Her eyes roll back. Return when you have learned something. If one of the cults claims you as their own full initiate, I might be interested in speaking to you. Hmm... Okay, so I have to go a little bit more into the into the culty stuff, huh? Where will you lay your head tonight? Every acolyte has a favoured spot in the flotilla to take their kip. The politics of one's sleeping arrangements are complicated. Your choices here will affect the disposition of the cults towards you. Favour with a cult can generate rewards or occasionally open options while pursuing other objectives. We can speak to the illuminated archivist. The sickly leader of the Super Lapsarians has inducted you into the first of their mysteries. Might he be willing to divulge more? He has built a hideaway inside the cargo hold of a rotting London steamer. The stamp of the Crown and Misery Company gleams in the candlelight. Recently polished. Faded paintings of old music hall acts adorn the walls. Tables cram the hold, littered with hideous and broken ornaments. Shepherdesses, kittens, the tentacle rubbery men of old London, all vie for your eye. Yeah, so without ministry approved literature, we can't do anything here. Let's return to the flotilla. You have read enough. Your eyes are sore with it. Well, let's lay our head somewhere, I guess. Because you were selected by one of the leaders of the mystics to uncover their sacred mysteries, you may sleep where you like. Everyone is eager to see what you choose. There isn't much to do here. That we can have a cosy berth near an open hearth, wine and candles, shared warmth and traded stories, you are strengthened by community. A crow's nest, a lonely, eerie, far above the mists, you are strengthened by solitude, or whatever the others are doing. Where they sleep, you sleep. You are strengthened by tradition. Let's just follow what everybody else is doing. When Londoners sleep, 
They do so regardless of their surroundings. Noise shall not disturb them, nor light arouse them. A Londoner can sleep through damnation. They keep to their regular hours, for they have adapted to the endless dark beneath the earth. The words wash over you as you lay down to sleep. Hmm, a bell tolls from a downed ship somewhere in the sea below. Interesting. Well, we can sing. On rising, that is singing. For some, a mourning chorus. For others, a lament. Lungs swell. The flotilla's dwellings are made of broken boats and battered carpentry. Mists, luminous and sinuous, snake through the gaps. Voices carry on the breeze. Each could be just beside you, or on stood on distant deck. Here there are no echoes, and the sky swallows all songs. All sing nonetheless. What do you sing of? A place you left behind, your home on the other side of the horizon. Of loss, that is much to sing of. Of life, the riot and revel of it. Let's go with of a place you left behind. Your voice joins the others in chorus. You chant from a hymnal of old London, a place gaslit and hidden, deep and dark and marvellous. Whispers wash in from somewhere to the north. The flotilla is shrouded in a hush. You are invited to sup tea and drink mushroom wine with the supralapsarians. Ooh, lovely. Here we can give a confession. At this hour, the acolytes purge themselves of their sins. Confessions are to be given and to be received. You are expected to take part. The acolyte smiles as you kneel in front of her. A bowl of salt water is between you. Do not speak to each other, but to the water, which will drown your secrets. Your eyes meet in the bowl. Her smile widens in encouragement. So we can confess an error of yearning. You long for things to be as they were. You confess an error of despair. What hope is there left to you? But you can confess an error of sentiment. Sometimes your heart grows heavy. Go with yearning. We long for things to be as they were, like jolly old London. The acolyte nods encouragingly. He speaks a few words from the book. I, too, long for all manner of things. Her eyes widen as though she misspoke. I mean that I wish to see sunlight and starlight again, but we have fallen and such things are denied to us. She leans in to whisper her own confession to the bowl. Scarlet starlight from somewhere far distant casts the flotilla in red. Despite the modishness of your profession and the outlandish quality of your stories, you are accepted by the supralapsarians. Ah, what will we do with the confession you've heard? This is the hour in which the acolytes decide what to do with their confessions. The supralapsarians have elaborate rituals surrounding confessions. The other acolytes have mimicked their example and use this hour to keep or betray the confessions they recently heard. Whatever you do here may already have been done to you. So we can either betray it, a secret given only has power if used, we can don a mask, a pre-celestial tradition, the hour of confessions requires it, or we can keep it, a secret kept has value, 
A shared secret is no longer a secret. Have we done a mask? That reminds me of um, the, uh, Visage in Sunless Seas. Let's see what happens if we don a mask. You follow other acolytes in choosing a flimsy wooden mask. A bat, fox, cat, or bear. It denotes that you carry a confession and are available to hear others. You promenade about the decks, clutching candles as you go. Darkness falls over the flotilla. It is an hour for candles. They speak your name in the shadows and toast you in their revels. You are a darling of London. We can dine at the feast. At the end of the day, the acolytes gather for a feast. If you were cynical, you might suggest this was the only reason the sex banded together. Makeshift tables are laid with the fruits of the quiet sea. Some acolytes have spent their days on the waves, fishing for whatever blind, writhing things count as fish here. Others forage for preserved food from the forgotten ships. Still others range farther, among engine wrecks and refuse of the Bureau. Wisely rationed, there is enough for one such feast every week or so. How will you dine? With traditional decorum that are standards to maintain. With gusto, a feast is no time for restraint. Or with restraint, you will master your desires. We're going to go with traditional decorum, of course. Get me my many sized forks and knives. You will not eat until you have located the appropriate cutlery. You pass to the left and shake and take. You pass to the left and take from the right. You won't use the tablecloth as a napkin. The superlapsarians look on admiringly, while the sanctified get juices all over their clothes. So the hours of the quiet sea quality has gone. It's as though you never left. They whisper to each other. Their eyes agleam with something akin to hope. I can attend the last rite. As the other cultists are departing, your friends among the supralapsarians bid you join them. They promise a reward. Or we can make an offering for more time on the flotilla. What is more you wish to do here among the cults of the Avid Horizon? This will reset your progress with the cults and restart the hour scouter. This will allow you to change the dispositions you have for the cult. Okay, so if I didn't want to be, uh, you know, super friendly with the super aliens. I think I'm happy with where it is. Let's, uh... Let's see. You are brought to a warm underdeck. Which might once have been a hole. The fire roars in a hearth. And the ceiling is painted with false stars. The illuminated archivist smiles to greet you and pours you tea, which you are instructed to serve to the silent mystic. I have been pleased by the observances of this cult, he says to you. Perhaps there is something in it. Now that the king is gone, we must find a means to go on, mustn't we? He sighs and passes the cup back. This is yours. Go back to the stairs, Captain. Seek the truth. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there's nothing more we can do here other than leave the flotilla. You leave the flotilla, emerging back onto the ice and silence of the quiet sea. A few acolytes watch you leave. Perhaps someone waves, and then the winds drown all sound, and the flotilla is behind you. Perhaps you'll return. But what else can we do here? We can approach the gate. Once, thousands spilled through from the world you left behind. Now it is half submerged, and there have been no newcomers in more than a year. Your crew plead with you to stay. 
maybe not a good idea. And we can't sacrifice to the burrow below, which would be quite it would be quite interesting. Can we sit in contemplation? I need to lower my terror. Why are you here? At the edge of the horizon. On an all but empty flotilla, far from the place where you were born. No way back. If you ever wanted to return. How many waited for the gate to open? How many came through, unable to go further, unable to return? What are they now? Are there any still there? You would need to fly to the gate itself to find out. The water. Herbals. You see your face emerge in the sea below. Visible. Through the mist. Hmm. Well, I would say that we are actually done here. But I think I'm going to end the episode here before looking somewhere else. I think in the next episode we are going to try and find Warbly Jets de Mer. It's imperative that we find it. It might be over here. It could be over here. Or it could be all the way down here. But I have a funny feeling it's going to be on this side of the map. I don't know why. I just The, the mists and stuff kind of make me think. And it's going to be here. We're looking for flukes. If we manage to find the flukes, we're going to find wobbly juxta there but either way thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed our trip down joining a cult <laughs> please like subscribe let me know what you think your comments are greatly appreciated thank you again to the members of the channel it really is the best thing you can do and as always see you next time <laughs>